Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm excited to have you and chat with you about your YouTube journey. So um, why don't we get started with having you share what inspired you to get onto YouTube so many years ago? Well, I didn't realize there was this whole world of YouTube that we know. I just thought it was like more informational, cats, all of that, until I was... Cats. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> until I was learning more about being a, a successful nursing mom, and I discovered there was a world of moms out there that were sharing information, and I was I just got hooked, and I found Cass, who you interviewed from mm -hmm. Clutterbug, mm -hmm. and I was addicted to her. Her and I, and now we're friends, and I, I still can't believe that. But um, so I found her, and she, I don't know, she put like a seed in me, like planted a seed of I could do this because I went uh, all through high school learning about editing and videography oh. and it was something that I wanted to get into so it wasn't foreign to me and one day I just it just came to me like you could do this and I thought maybe it would help me um, do things a little bit better in my life help me you know hold me accountable to some things and I didn't think anyone would watch but I knew it would be a huge motivator for me and it people started watching and it just happened. Wow. Just organically just happened. So what kind of content were you were you putting up? Still the same that I'm doing now, okay. lifestyle, um, tips, tricks to help make life easier. Mm -hmm. Yep, same same things. What I was wanting to learn in my life then is what I shared and same thing now. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. for you, was it you know, you're inspired by Cash from Clutterbug mm -hmm. and you, you, you know, you're watching her and you're like, okay, I could do this. Yeah. And what was your whole purpose for wanting to get onto YouTube and, and share, you know, your advice or experience? It really was just to help other moms to feel, and, and women, not just moms, mm -hmm. feel that they weren't alone in their journey. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, as a, either as a mom, a homemaker, um, if you work outside the home, you still have to come home to managing your home and it, it can be stressful and you feel like you're alone a lot of the time. And I just wanted to be an encourager. Like I was trying to mm -hmm. encourage myself in the process and I wanted to, to continue to do that, to help other women. And the response has been deafening. So many people said, thank you. Um, it does feel lonely or I don't even know where to start. I work outside the home and I come home and I don't know how to be a house manager. I don't even know where to begin, where to go. And that was the whole reason why I recorded my journey. I have ADHD. I can, it's like I float through life sometimes. Where do I begin? Where do I start? How do I finish? Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to share that and help others. So. Yeah, that's great. So at what point did, as you were uploading, um, did you immediately take it seriously from the beginning and say, you know, I'm, I'm going to upload this many no. times a week? No, actually, like, I didn't even know there was a system to it, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, I was, it was very slow in the beginning. I would say maybe twice a month. Oh, okay. It was very low. And then when I started to really gain traction, I was like, okay, there's something here mm -hmm. that I could use and grow. And then I just started to learn more um, watching like Tim Schmoyer, mm -hmm. um, Daryl Eves, and I thought, I, okay, this could take off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not That wasn't my goal, but I thought there is a way to reach more people, and if I apply these tools, it will it will lead me there, and it most definitely has. So um, it, then I started posting once a week, and then I was posting seriously five times a week. Oh, wow. And Yeah, it... And then it just got like very stressful and, and hard to do. And I did that for years. I was posting five days a week for years. And I noticed that when I shrunk how much a week that I was posting, mm -hmm. my channel did better. Hmm. My videos did better. And I actually learned that at CVX Live, a YouTube conference out here in Utah, that if you let your video breathe more days in between, it actually does better. And then it just exploded. So when was this when you started? Like how many years ago did you start your channel? Uh, 2012, April 2012. 2012. Okay. Yeah. And then you were on it kind of inconsistently. And then you said you started mm -hmm. to take it really seriously. Uh, how long after that? I would say probably 2014, 2015. Okay. And when was I really saw the potential and what it could bring 
to the family, you know. Yeah, um, like it can actually be a career. I'm like, oh, I could really make money off this. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and for years I wasn't making money off of She's in Her Apron. For years it was, I didn't think that was really possible. Mm-hmm. But I've seen other friends bring in an income. And, and that's when I was like, hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I could do this from home. I could be a stay-at-home mom sharing what I am doing in the home with others and make an income. Yeah. So it changed my world. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, especially if you're doing something initially as a hobby and then you're like, whoa, yeah. I can make money. Whoa, this could actually be a career. Because so. it takes a lot of time, as you know, to edit, film, edit, upload. I mean, it's a lot of hours. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so was there a tipping point or a channel that kind of took off where you said, you know, a few years after uploading, you said, you know what, mm-hmm. I can really see something. Was it something that happened on your channel? Um, well, I noticed that, um, when I was sharing the day in the life videos, Mm -hmm. that's when the traction came on because they wanted to peek inside. And I noticed that there was other family vloggers that, um, were doing the same thing and they were really taking off and I didn't want to be a family channel, but people were so in like invested and they started Mm, to get invested mm -hmm, and when mm -hmm. they started to get invested in you and your family because they're seeing that you're real um nothing we ever did was ever staged or scripted none of that um and they they love the realness you know because I was showing dedicated videos on a certain topic and then they could see me implement it in the day in the life videos and I think that's when People were stick coming and Mm -hmm. staying Mm -hmm. like stuck with us. And so um, that's when I noticed like, wow, this is growing. So if you, yeah, that's, that's awesome. So if you didn't want to be a family vlogger, but you, Mm -hmm. I mean, you notice that, Hey, people were more loyal and committed to my channel. If I showed a peek Mm -hmm. into my life, then what types of things were you showing in your day in the life videos? Um, Mom, the everyday mom schedule housewife homemaker schedule so they would see me cart around the kids and 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 see how I put routines and I started creating routines because I needed them to help me with my ADHD Mm -hmm. so they could see that when I shared that on a dedicated video and then showed it in my routine on the video they were they loved that so it was Mm. it was more um of that and I would show the kids but not a whole lot of the kids it was a hard balance of like how much do I share of my children and how much you know, but anytime I didn't have them in the video, they're like, how's the kids? We miss them. And now, um, the last probably year and a half, I haven't been sharing my kids anymore. It, it just made us, there was a switch in me that said not to, and I don't anymore. So I have our base of she's in her apron that's been around for years that they understand, you know, for safety issues and things. I don't Mm -hmm. share the children anymore. Um, they miss seeing them, but I do give updates and they love that. And so it's kind of like I've had to train the audience now, like this is the direction that we're moving in. So um, I'll share, you know, this is going on or this is going on with the kids, but it's not so dedicated on the children anymore, Mm -hmm. Um, which it never really was. They were there, but um, I just got really uncomfortable with it after a while. Mm -hmm. And so but sharing a piece of your life in that way and they could see like it's not all roses and butterflies that I'm struggling here Mm -hmm, (laughs) and mm -hmm. they're seeing it but then they're also seeing how the routines I put in place and and are sharing on YouTube are helping and they can see that and I think that's one of the things that um is help keep my audience with me and I've had people from day one they're Mm. still with us and and I know their names and it's just when I see their icon in comments i it's like seeing family I love it I'm like yeah oh, it blow, it blows my mind it yeah it really does yeah that's amazing and the fact that they stuck with you throughout mm-hmm. the different transitions and mm-hmm. you know different iterations of your channel from yeah. kind of more how-to to a little bit of vlogging now back to um and we could talk about that too you know back yeah. to kind of more how-to that they're mm-hmm. still there yeah they are they are and I think too it's because um because of how real we are, I, sometimes I go, oh, should I share that? And then something in me says, yes, share it. And then I get an email or a letter or a DM saying, thank you so much for saying that. I thought I was alone in this. I, you know, um, 
I've been thinking about this. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. And so I really rely on um, outside forces, I would say, this the spirit with me when I'm editing, mm-hmm. um, because I do it for them, and then in return, it blesses my family. So, so that's why when I'm doubting what I'm doing on She's in Her Apron, should I keep going? Um, I always think about the people that write in, the women that write in, and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it for them. Mm-hmm. And in return, it blesses them, and in return, it blesses us. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I love that. Um, and so how did you go from, say, showing your kids, which really brought a lot of success to your channel because yeah. people were really able to connect with you and your family mm-hmm. and what you're doing and you're able to actually put into practice the things that you're teaching on your channel and showing it through your routines. So then how mm-hmm. did you go from that to not showing the kids anymore and still maintaining that level of connection? I never said, I'm not showing my kids anymore. Okay recently it's like yeah you're not seeing the kids I'm trying not to show them anymore type Mm -hmm. of thing but it was just phasing it out you would hear them you might see them walk around in the background but it was never focused on Mm -hmm. them so I just just slowly started making the day in the lives where you don't see the children as much you can hear them you know they're there Mm -hmm. but it it wasn't because it's it's she's in her apron it's not my children it's not the you know it is the Hughes family but it's not so I, I had to keep going back to my why, um, but it's but I, I don't regret it. I absolutely don't regret it um, at all. And I have all this wonderful footage uh, with the family. And mm. but I just kind of just trained the audience. Like mm-hmm. they're like we're not seeing the kids. Where are the kids? And it's like they're here. I'm just yeah. 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 So you, you made it a, a very gradual thing that it wasn't yeah. like an abrupt. So no, it was very gradual. <clears throat> and so then how then do you still be, you know, share then? So, you know, you went from sharing all these things with your family. So now yeah. what is it that you're so sharing? It, it's still the same, but the camera's just not on my children. They mm. still see me in route in my car um, mm-hmm. at tutoring. And I'm like, okay, the kids are now in tutoring and I'm here in the car mm. sharing they'll see them pop in the car and they'll get like a side view or one of the kids will pop in and wave. Um, and so that's how I've been doing it. You know, we're running two here and there. Um, so they, they're kind of getting a glimpse of the kids, but if they really want more of my family, it's more on Instagram. Um, they'll get like a family picture or an Insta story. So I share them there, but not, it's not all dedicated to them. So I just had to make that switch somehow. So, I mean, you definitely get a lot more on Instagram through my Insta stories and and things like that. The last time I really shared my family was the the wedding vlog. My daughter got married in May. And that, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, so we did share parts of the wedding. We didn't, and because I, I did it for the audience that's been with us for so Mm -hmm. long Mm -hmm. they were so invested in her engagement and the Mm -hmm. wedding and the process so but really that I kind of in my mind said that's that Mm -hmm. at that point yeah you're done the final (laughs) yeah yeah Mm -hmm. it's just something that spoke to me of to share less of the children but I still speak of them I still say this is what I'm doing as a mom we're doing this with lacrosse we're going over here for tutoring we're you know over here for speech and and just so they, they, they could still see that yeah. I'm with them, but the attention's not on them. Because it's about my journey yeah. as a mom, a homemaker. It's it's really about how I'm juggling mm-hmm. all of this in my apron. Yeah, no, I totally get that. So you're still showing that, but the, yeah. the children are not the focus anymore. Right. And your audience is still able to get a glimpse in your lives to see what you're doing mm-hmm. and really how you're doing it. But you're like, you know, yes. the kids don't need to be the focus. It's not a family vlog. It's yes. about you and how you're juggling this act. How many kids do you have? Yeah. Uh, we have four. Four kids, yeah. You know, your yeah. life as a mother of four and, and all this. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, was there something that happened specifically that made you not want to share your kids anymore or was it just a feeling no well there was a feeling Mm -hmm. I've always stayed very close to my intuition through the whole process Mm -hmm. like should I should I and it was always like yes yes and then there was like a switch should I and they're like "Eh, not so much Mm -hmm. I started to get email that was very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. and then I noticed that I was told actually of certain 
gossip sites that were talking about my kids and spreading false information and really targeting my family. And I could not believe what was created in the minds of these people. Um, So family and friends found out about certain things and they would tell me, I'm like, you got to stop. You just got to stop. I don't want to know about this stuff, Mm. you know? And so that really put a kibosh in it. And I thought, I'm done. I, Mm -hmm. you know, they didn't, you know, I've always asked their permission to film. Um, but I thought, no, I had to go back to my original why it's not a family vlog. It's my journey as a mom. It's she's in her apron. And I just had to run with that. And I don't regret it one bit. And yeah, no, not one bit. Yeah. You had to protect your, your family and your children, especially. Yep. Yeah. And so I love what you said about always following your intuition, because I do Mm -hmm. think this process of creating content is a very intuitive process. And I think for women, you know, this podcast is really featuring women. I think that's where we Mm -hmm. definitely have an advantage there, because I think women were very intuitive creatures. Um, How have been some different ways that you've listened to your intuition and kind of course corrected and uh, made decisions based on that for your channel? Um, A lot of my content I, the, the ideas that I get from it are from my audience. And so they, and it's so interesting because it, what they want is what I've been feeling and wanting to. Mm. And so it's just life. It's, you know, what we're going through. So every season of every year, it's like, they're interested in the same things I'm interested in. And I think they just, they feel what's going on in the world. So like right now, um, I'm, I've always shared things about like food storage and just being prepared. And so now with what's going on in the world, like they really want more information on it Mm. and they're feeling it just like I'm feeling it. And so I'm sharing more. Um, They give me the content. It's, Mm -hmm. it's amazing when you, when you're stuck and don't know what to create, you go to your audience. I mean, you're doing it for them and they, they give it to you. And so I, I rely on their intuition and I rely on what's going on with me. And it, it really, it really connects. It's amazing. And so right now I'm giving, um, the vlogs for this month of September are more on preparedness and food storage and easy, cheap recipes, mm-hmm. um, how to make your dollar stretch with your food for your family. And, um, and I don't think it's, just by coincidence it's and so I've always just kind of felt that and I remember when I really pushed the channel and I really started to grow it was it was more routine than women were just like I am drowning and Mm -hmm. and I felt it too because I was too and so I took my intuition and their intuition and we created routines and the homework station and all these videos that really just took off and so when I go back and I look in my analytics on the top videos, they're really videos that are um, centered on the needs for them and their family. It's mm. not the fluff. It's not the day in the life videos. It's it's not. And it's how can I care for my family? What can I do to be more prepared? What what are there things that what can do, you know, things that can help ground them mm-hmm. as a homemaker, um, a home manager? Um, so it's, it's incredible. I, and I never for years took advantage and really looked at my analytics. Mm. And I always heard that. I always heard that with YouTube, your yeah. analytics, be in your analytics. And I would have to say the last four years, I've really been diving into them and mm-hmm. your audience tells you, and if you listen, you will grow. It's yeah. I always thought that I had to come up with, you know, and be so creative. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah look, this is what they're gravitating to. This is what they're coming to you for. It's, it's pretty neat. Yeah. So what are um, some of the things that you look at in your analytics? Um, I concentrate on the last 28 days when they give you that figure, what's mm-hmm. doing really well in the last 28 days. I also look to see what's created the most revenue too, because that considers watch time as well. And so I'm always like, what are, what are they really sitting and mm-hmm. watching? And man, the longer videos, mm-hmm. they will sit and I'm like, this video is too long. No, like they, and then when they say this 20, 30 minute video, oh, it wasn't long enough. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, wow, okay. And so um, I look for what is popping up in the last 28 days, which has gotten that, that watch time. Mm-hmm. Views, I, I, views are views, right? Yeah. I don't really gravitate 
because some of my lower view videos, the watch time is amazing. I mean, mm. they're watching 60%. And mm -hmm. so, um, so I, I go off that, I gauge it off that. So if they're staying and watching, they're listening and they're getting something out of it, I will continue to make those videos. So mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Yeah. And, and watch time is a, is a really important indicator because, yeah, it's telling you that your audience really enjoys what you're doing, basically. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, if I had followed all the advice that I listened to over the years, years ago, mm -hmm. would it be further? But no, because I've made, I've gone with my pace with the channel. I'm not looking for YouTube fame. I'm not looking, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just wanting to share, but how do I do it more effectively? that it can really get out there. And so I, I try to concentrate on evergreen content as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. um, and so that helped with the transition of more of like the day, you know, the, the family vlogging. Mm -hmm. So I will create still a day in the life, but what is it that people want to come to? And so that helps me to know like, yeah, you know, yes, this is a day in the life, but what, what, what meat in there can they take from it? If they're mm -hmm. going to, invest in me and sit for 25 minutes what me is in there that can help them you know yeah um, and so that's what I look towards when I do I love day in the life they're fun mm -hmm. I'm I, I do enjoy those videos a lot but it's like okay what can they take away from being with me for 25 minutes you know yeah I look for that yeah and it, and it shows in the watch time it shows in those analytics and I never cared about analytics anymore. Now I'm like, I'm in them. I'm like, where, what, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm studying them now, which is crazy. Yeah. I should have done that years ago, but. Yeah. Have yeah. you, has that made a difference for you in studying oh, analytics? Yeah. Yes. Hugely. Mm -hmm. I am, let's, let's just say that, oh, in the last few, well, actually the last month, oh, I wrote this down. The view duration was up 26%. Mm. Um, and then the, and then with that, your, your AdSense, I mean, it jumped up 112%. And mm -hmm. so I was like, wow, there's something to really <laughs> be watching your, your analytics. And so now I'm in there every day, just studying and seeing what they really want. What, why are they here? You know, mm -hmm. cause I'm, I don't, I, I'm just Kimmy. I, I, I'm a mom. I'm, mm -hmm, yes, mm -hmm. I post on YouTube, but it shows here there's more than just that, you know? And so. Yeah, I think that's so incredible about YouTube because it does give you such a robust back-end analytics. I mean, that's that's what I do is I, I have a lot of private clients and I, I have access to their, their analytics and I'm literally on analytics. Like when I'm not recording interviews, I'm on analytics all the time for my clients yeah. every single day looking at them studying them because there's so I know a lot of people get overwhelmed with them so I always like oh, to yeah. simplify it for people but for mm -hmm. me I I really enjoy all that so yeah. you could get so so much out of those those numbers yeah and the new updates with YouTube they're mm -hmm. they're getting easier to mm -hmm. read and understand and, and 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 translate it for you so it's amazing because I think that's why like in the beginning I was like oh yeah analytics <laughs> I was like no yeah. I don't it's I don't understand it and I would just stay clear. But every time I would go to the conferences and listen and listen to Tim and mm -hmm. Daryl and mm -hmm. all these amazing friends of ours now that would speak on it, I'm like, okay, I need to be in my analytics more. Mm -hmm. And it's telling because it tells you what your audience wants. I mean, I don't have to sit and wonder what I should be making for content. I mean, it's there. So this you, is what they want. So you look at the watch time. Is there anything else that, that you pay attention to? Um, main, mainly the watch time mm -hmm. and then, um, like the page where it pops up, it says the last 28 days, what's, mm -hmm. what's popping up because I do that because like one of my videos that I made, I swear it was 2014. Yeah. They'll randomly over, start blowing up, three right? Three million views, mm -hmm. three um, most non put in effort video. <laughs> it's called the Miracle Shower yeah. Cleaner. It's yeah. a horrible video. Yeah. But I threw it up there because it was something I just learned and wanted to share with everybody. Mm -hmm. That video blew up and it still shows in my last 28 days. It still shows in watch time. It's like, what can I learn from this, from this very old video that's still gaining traction? And so it's, it's amazing. So I'm constantly there because you just never know what video mm -hmm. picks up and does good. And it's like, okay, so maybe I should make a video that kind of piggybacks on that. 
so two months ago I did the miracle laundry stripping video because it's all over TikTok. I mean, yeah. This, this trend okay. is not new. Yeah, yeah. But when one platform picks it up, so I made that and attached it to that video. So it's like I learned where I could piggyback off of another video. And so, yeah, if you're ever wondering what should I be making, especially if you're burnt out Mm -hmm. because you do get burnt out doing this, just look at your analytics. Your audience is telling you, telling you. Yeah. And I would say every few months I get onto Instagram and do a poll or a question tab saying, what do you want to see? Mm-hmm. And th- your audience will tell you, yeah. you know, yeah. they, they come for you. And yeah. So, yeah, it's super, super powerful um, to, to really, cause the, like you said, and I like how you talked about the intuition because yeah. your audience isn't, your audience is just telling you what they want. And so it's their intuition of what they want. So using yep. your intuition to also use their intuition. But yeah, I mean, I know, um, so it's like the last 28 days one, you can go in there and you'll see um, the views of your top videos. And it's what will happen is you'll see like, I don't know how many it is. It's like the top 10 or yeah. 15 videos yeah. or whatever. And what, if you're somebody who's been on YouTube for a while, then what you'll what's really, really helpful is that you'll see, oh, wow, like, like Kimmy said, there's this video from six months ago that's now taking off or from a month ago and so you'll be able to see which of your videos is bringing in the most views on your channel and it is a really important thing to take a look at because it's giving you clues in regards to what people are liking exactly and what you can make it's amazing yeah when the last time I looked at this a few days ago that miracle shower cleaner was number 10 Mm -hmm. and yeah so that I posted January 2014 it has 3,476,000 views it's yeah, and I, and was that I wish always I'd done better editing or production on it? But it doesn't matter. See, it's it's uh, that's why when people say I want to create a channel, should I? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You never know what video or what m- your message is. Yes, you want to start one. Is it too late? It's it's oversaturated. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. Do it because people will find you. They like you for you know for you because there's so many women on YouTube that do what I do, mm-hmm. but they gravitate to a certain style or personality. So anytime anyone says, should I? Yes, do it. Mm -hmm. Do it. You never know what could come of it and you could bless your family with it. And holy cow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so motivating. I love that. And it's so true. It's like, like you said, there's tons of, of women on YouTube that are sharing their homemaking skills or your routines, but they connected with you and your style, your style of video, your family, whatever it is. And everybody has something special and unique that they offer. So I totally agree with that. Um, The funniest thing, sorry, the funniest thing I I hear is, I don't know why I'm here. I don't have kids. I don't cook, but I'm watching. Mm. And and that's amazing because mm-hmm. you you just never know like what you're doing for someone else. You could be a you know a friend to someone and not even know it. I get messages like that all the time. I consider you a friend. I don't even have kids, and it's just you just never know what you can bring to people. So when they say, "Should I start a channel?" Yep. Yeah. Sure. Go for it. That's you never right. know who you're gonna bless. You never know. Yeah, I love that. You never know who you're going to bless. I think that's mm-hmm. that's so that's so. And if you're doing what you're doing, like listening to your intuition and just going with what feels right and you're going back to your yeah. why, like you said. Yes, always um, go back to your why. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah. And what would you say your why is if you have to put it in like a succinct phrase? Um, it's showing that you can overcome imperfections. I have a saying that's called pop. Um, I I've learned it from so many other women. It's progress over perfection. Mm. And so just pop where you are in your life. Mm. I love that. I think that can, I think that can really relate to even having a YouTube channel progress because so many people get stuck in the uh, analysis paralysis. I see it all the time Mm -hmm. uh, with my, with my, you know, bootcamp students. And it's like, don't some people some people will enroll and then like nine months later they're still figuring out their first video i'm like no that you, you just gotta do it you just you gotta just, do it you just gotta do it i have this sweet lady named kat who was following me for years and she 
um, reached out to me on Instagram, like, I would love to mentor you. She does the, she did work for the fly lady, Mm -hmm. um, for the fly lady routines. And that's where I learned about routines because it helped me get out of postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And so she mentored for me for quite a while. And this Mm -hmm. was during my YouTube journey while I'm sharing. And she was like, I was thinking about starting a channel. I'm like, do it. Mm -hmm. Just grab your camera. Do I need a special camera? No. Do you have a phone with a camera on it? Go for it. She started to do that. And I mentioned her and how she's helping me. And she puts out live videos. Her channel is doing so good. She's doing amazing. And now she has clients from YouTube, Mm -hmm. you know, because we always talk about getting earning money, not just with AdSense. And Mm -hmm. she, she, her and her husband retired and they're creating this great income and they have Gosh, she mentors like 25 women Mm -hmm. just off of from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so I say, pick up your camera and talk. Yeah. Just go for it. Mm -hmm. You never know. Yeah. Never know. And YouTube is such a powerful platform. I think it's the most powerful platform in the Mm -hmm. world because it's truly the best way to get yourself out there. Bar Mm -hmm. none, like without question. Yep. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, Kimmy, we're nearing the end of the interview, and this is what I call the hot seat round. So I'll just okay. go through, you know, list of questions, and you respond okay. um, with your first response. So okay. what is the favorite video that you have created for your channel? Oh, my goodness. My favorite video. Oh, no. I don't know. I I, I have a playlist of bloopers. It doesn't do very well. The bloopers don't work, but I go back and watch those and just laugh my butt off because I'm like, I know what happens yeah. in the background of some of these. So I go back to the blooper ones, but I don't, I, I, okay, no, no, besides the bloopers. Honestly, my favorite videos is when I did a week long collab with Cass from Clutterbug. Mm. Are you kidding me? The woman that I found on YouTube and just fell in love with and gave me the inspiration, like, oh yeah. I, I would have to say that. Oh, that's yes. awesome. She's amazing. Yeah, I loved her with her oh. interview. I, I loved her. I thought it was it was one of my favorite interviews I've done. She was so insightful and so open with everything. Yes, mm-hmm. I loved that interview, by the way. Mm-hmm. I loved it. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your highest viewed video on your channel? It's that silly miracle shower cleaner. Yeah. That is... <laughs> Yeah, that's it's crazy. That one, that's the highest one. And then after that comes the freezer meals. So. The freezer meals. I saw that. So Yeah. Uh did that video take off right away or no. cuz it sounds like yeah, later on. Yeah. Later on. Um mm-hmm. let's see. It went up 2014, I would say it started to really gain traction in 2016. 17, so 2 years 16? after you uploaded two it. 2 years later. Yeah. And I think it has yeah. 3 million views now. Yeah, three, yeah. over 3 million views. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. A lot, and that's what I always say too. You just, you never you know, know. A video can take off. And I always say every single video that you release, that's another little piece of bait to get people yeah. into your channel. Yep, that's mm-hmm. so true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so any video that you uploaded that you were super excited about that just didn't do that well? Oh, my gosh so many. I thought, oh, this, this one's going to do so good. And it doesn't. Um, there have been freezer meal videos, like slow cooker ones. I'm like, they love these. And like 20,000 views, which to some people is a lot, but mm-hmm. like with what I've already created, I'm like, yeah. this isn't doing well. And the watch time isn't doing well. So it's, it's shocking. Cause you just, you know, I thought for sure this, this one would do good. And no. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm like, and I look at the thumbnail, I look at the title. I'm like, it's just like all the other ones, but it just didn't pick up. Mm-hmm. And so I just don't know if it's timing. I don't know. But it just shocked me. It yeah. shocked me because it was a slow cooker freezer. No. And it's exactly so, yeah. what you think they wanted, but I guess not. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I don't know if a lot of people were on vacation when that went up and, never, <laughs> and it got lost in the thread of videos. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. That, that shocks me, especially when it's with those. That shocks me. Yeah. Uh, what is the biggest opportunity you got as a result of your YouTube channel? Um, well, recently I was just able to work with uh, Cheerios mm. in my family. I, sh- I show Cheerios all the time oh. over the years. So that was, that was great to be recognized by, you know, by that. But also um, being able to work with millennial moms um, 
with Mindy McKnight on her channel and being a part of that, uh, being a millennial mom and having speaking engagements at conferences. And I, I was like, people, you want, you want me to speak? Like I was shocked. Yeah. So, um, and I'm always happy to, cause I love having that connection with people. And by doing that, I was able to create my own like mini little, uh, not a conference, but a, a mini meeting with people. Mm-hmm. I did one in Massachusetts and one in South Carolina and women came out to hear me speak. It was, that blew me away. That uh-huh. blew me away. And I want to do more of those. I want to do more of those where I could go out and talk to women and that watch the channel and see them face to face. Nothing is better. I mean, it's great when you get to talk to them online, but when you can connect see in them, person. Yes. It's oh I know. That I'm gonna cry. That's my favorite. That's yeah. The, that's the best. That's yeah. the best. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I, I'm missing that these days with no in-person anything right now it's 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 like yeah because those are my favorite parts too is when I get to meet people yeah and that's the best you get yeah, that human, the energy of human mm-hmm. person to person you know yep so. yep I, I hope we I could do more of those soon those yeah the- uh what is your superpower that you think has led to the success of your channel <laughs> superpower oh my gosh I honestly think is that I don't hold back Mm. like I say the wrong thing I do the wrong thing maybe you know it is real (laughs) so I think that's my superpower is I I keep it real Mm -hmm. sometimes what I say offends people Mm -hmm. sorry you know Mm -hmm. you never know what's going to offend somebody ever and so I, I think it's just I am what I am. I am who I am. And I share the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah. I, mean, I, I share the messy house. You know, I don't start off cleaning a clean home. Like, I, you want to see messy, here's messy. I think that's been the thing is I've just been honest and very honest. Like, this is my world. It's not perfect. Like, right now, look how, isn't that pretty? Yeah. <laughs> it's all perfectly made bed. Erica. Erica, I mean, come on. Yeah. And I share that in my videos. Mm-hmm. I share that. And I think that's the key. People just want real. They want to be able to know I'm not alone. There's people like me. She's like me. You know, there's days we got it and there's days we don't. Yeah. And I think that's been the key. It's yeah. just be, be you. Mm-hmm. Be you. That's why they're there. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if you were to start over right now with your YouTube channel, what would you do differently? Oh my goodness. What would I do differently? Maybe just be more consistent in the beginning Mm -hmm. because it would have, you know, had built faster and be able to um, reach more. So I think, honestly, I think just being more consistent in the beginning Mm -hmm. and and not being afraid to put myself out there. Just go all in at the beginning, basically. Mm -hmm. Go all in. Yeah. Go all in. I, yep. Go all in because it's, it's been a blessing. It really has. Uh, what is your number one struggle when it comes to your YouTube channel? Oh, feeling that I'm a one woman show. Mm-hmm. I I do the editing, the email, um, and <laughs> I really need to hire someone to come help me. Mm-hmm. I really do. Um, it's it's hard to juggle it all and edit and um, and I know there's companies that can do editing for you, but. For me, that's what I love. The passion is the editing mm. and creating that story. I mean, I have an idea of how a video is going to go, but it changes once you're editing. And like I say, I listen to the spirit a lot. It, it switches. I don't think I could hand that over to somebody. Yeah, it's so intuitive, so, that process for you. It, it's a, it's it's hard. It's a lot of hours. So, yeah, yeah. definitely would like to delegate a little bit more. Yeah. So. I mean, how many hours a week do you think you're working on your channel? <laughs> oh my gosh. I would have to say 60. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, between the filming and the editing and the emails and Instagram. And, that, and that's two and videos a week, right? Two videos a week. Yeah. 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 And during the holidays, I will sometimes bump it up to three Mm -hmm. because they really love seeing what you're doing in the holidays Holidays, and how you're planning. Yeah. 
So usually come the beginning of November, it's it's three. But yeah. I would I can't believe I was doing five, and at one point I was actually doing seven. Oh my god! But it grew the channel. I mm-hmm. mean, it, it it really. But oh, that's too much. No. Yeah. No, no, no. How long did you do that for? Were you years? Years. 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 I I would say from 2015, 14, 15. Until probably about a year ago, I was like, I gotta, I gotta cut this back. This is too much. And then when I learned to let your video breathe, it does better. Oh, I was like, yeah, I don't need to make this such a a chore. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a chore. It doesn't need to be. So yeah. even though you that helped your channel grow, though, right? Mm-hmm. Uploading yeah. so frequently, would you recommend that people do that if they're looking no. to grow? <laughs> yeah. No. If you're really listening to what your audience wants Mm -hmm. and dive into your analytics, which I should have done Mm -hmm. the beginning years, no, you, you'll be able to do twice a week. Um, I noticed that when I started to do twice a week and be consistent on those days, the channel grew, Mm -hmm. it grew faster (laughs) than all those years of trying to pump up the content Mm. every day. Yeah. Love that. So, Yep. Um, and then last question I asked this to, you know, to my guests is what is your unfair advantage? So every single person has their own unique talents. Um, and what would yours be that has contributed to your success? My ununique challenge? Unfair advantage. Oh, my unfair advantage. I don't know. That's That's an interesting question. My unfair. Well, I mean, I am home, mm-hmm. and I and I don't have to leave to go to work. So I would say, um, probably being able to be home and being able to make it a full time mm-hmm. job. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of friends that do this that also work outside the home. Mm. And, oh, hats off! I mean, it's you've got to be so busy, um, or w- definitely better organized. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I tip my hats off to them. I don't know. Maybe b- being able to be home already mm-hmm. as a stay-at-home mom, I would say that's probably my advantage. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Kimmy, so much for coming on the show and for sharing your journey and your experience. I mean, I think this you had so many awesome things that you shared. I, I loved it. Where can people <laughs> find you if they're not familiar with you and your channel? Um, of course, YouTube, but I'm definitely on Instagram most. Um, so they can find me on Instagram at she's in her apron. Um, I'm not very active on Facebook, but everything that posts to Instagram is on Facebook. So if you really want to connect with me and reach out, Instagram is the way to do it. I really, um, talk with the viewers. My, Mm -hmm. I call my friends. Um, I talk with them in the messages and DMS. And so if you really want to connect with me, hit me up on Instagram. Okay, awesome. And I'll put all the links in the description below and let us know in the comments what was your biggest takeaway? Do you have, and I loved what Kimmy said about pop progress over perfection. Did that resonate with you? And um, let us know your your thoughts on this interview. Thank you so much, Kimmy. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.